In 1968, one man changed the world of high jump forever and taught everybody an important life lesson. This is the story of Dick Fosbury and breaking paradigms. High jump has been an official sport in the Olympics from the beginning. As the decades and centuries went by, the technique naturally evolved from jumping from standing position to running before the jump, spreading the legs in the air like scissors and making a strenuous turn in midair, all to increase by a few centimeters the height that the participant was able to jump and hopefully win. But each of them was a variation of the same technique. One perhaps added a new movement, but all of them consisted of running to the bar, jumping straight and landing with one's feet. But on the Mexico City Olympic Games, October 20th, 1968, a 20-year-old civil engineering student changed the sport forever. Instead of the standard jumping that reigned the sport for ages, he turned his body in midair with his back facing the ground and landed that way. In that tournament, he shocked the whole world by setting a new Olympic record of 2.24 meters with a technique that would be known from then on as the Fosbury flop. In the beginning, far from being recognized for advancing the sport as no one else did, Dick received a lot of criticism and hate. A local newspaper called him the world's laziest high jumper. Another one said that he looked like a fish flopping in a boat. But it was just a matter of time. The truth was that he discovered a superior way to jump the bar and he was winning. Four years later, on the next Olympic Games, every single gold medalist used a Fosbury flop and it's nowadays the go-to technique in high jump. What Dick Fosbury did that day of October in Mexico was not just jumping higher than anyone else, he did something much more important, he broke a paradigm. The Cambridge Dictionary defines paradigm as a set of theories that explain the way a particular subject is understood at a particular time. For our purposes, we'll stretch this notion to accommodate looking at paradigm on a more broad level. Let's define it as a specific way of seeing and understanding a particular subject that defines our thinking acting and the possibilities that can come up. Under this definition, we could consider the following items to be paradigms. The schooling system, the 9 to 5 job, capitalism and socialism, psychology, science, terraplanism, geocentrism, marriage and sports. These worldviews force us to understand the world in a specific way and define how we interact with it. They also define and limit our actions, thoughts and possibilities. For example, psychology holds the human being in a completely different light than sociology or philosophy does. And what's interesting is that these paradigms have different insights available to them. Sociologists would struggle if they had to discover what Freud or Jung found out. Similarly, psychologists would find it impossible to write about human nature like Martin Heidegger did in Being and Time. And this is not because psychology or sociology are flawed. It's simply because paradigms work that way. They force us to think inside their box and it's almost impossible to break out. That's why for decades, high jumpers were locked into the paradigm of jumping straight and frontwards. Sure, there were some variations, but all of them were inside this way of seeing jumping. That is, until Dick Fosbury came into the picture. Perhaps due to his young age or his unusual background in physics, he was able to see past the limitations of the current paradigm and break free of it. He realized that jumping frontwards was not ideal and there was a better approach. In other words, he realized that not because people are doing or thinking about something in a way means that it's the correct or best one. And that's the same insight that every revolutionary had at some point in their lives. Before Copernicus came along, people believed that Earth was the center of the universe and that the sun and stars revolved around us. He discovered and demonstrated that in fact, the Earth was the one orbiting around the sun. Gandhi realized that there was no need to use violence and force to ignite a revolution and through peaceful demonstrations mobilized an entire country and claimed India's independence from Britain. Elon Musk challenged the status quo and set out to build reusable rockets when the entire industry believed it was impossible and destroyed them after each and every launch. Now it's not just Musk with SpaceX but also Jeff Bezos, Amazon's founder with Blue Origin and many more to come. The list goes on and on with Steve Jobs and the iPhone, Thomas Edison and the light bulb, Einstein and gravity and even when in 1872 an inventor decided to put wheels on suitcases. Yes, we put a man on the moon before we put wheels on luggage. That's a beautiful example on how paradigms lock our thinking. Anyways, there are quite a few lessons that we can learn from Dick Fosbury, Copernicus, Elon Musk and Gandhi, and in my opinion, they are extremely relevant.
Lesson number one, challenge the status quo. Not because something is done or is being held in a specific way means that it's correct or optimal. Discoveries and advancements are only possible because someone was courageous enough to challenge the status quo and tried a new approach, a new paradigm that changed everything. Lesson number two, the best results are outside the current paradigm. If you want to achieve the best results, be known and set yourself apart from your peers, you need to look outside your current paradigm. If not, you'll be playing the same game that others are and most of the improvements will be unsubstantial. This applies to business, science, sports, art, and really every creative endeavor. Number three, there's always a new paradigm waiting to be discovered. This lesson goes hand in hand with the previous one. Even though it might not look like it, there's always a new paradigm waiting to be discovered. It might be better like the one Fosbury discovered, it might be truer like the one Copernicus found, or it might just be different enough to enable new ways of thinking. But there's always a hidden road, waiting to be walked. Lesson number four, accept that there will be haters. If Dick Fosbury would have listened to his coach or colleagues, I wouldn't be mentioning him in this video. And the same can be said for every people that made a breakthrough. By doing things differently, you'll offend the people that are fully bought into the old ways of thinking and clinging to their paradigms. They will hate you, bully you and criticize you. Accept it and move on, you have better things to do. And finally, the last lesson is question everything. We've seen many, many paradigms rise and break in front of our eyes and throughout history. So what makes you think that we have the correct ones? Question the way you see and think about business, yourself, education, relationships, sports, and literally everything. With effort and a bit of luck, you'll discover a much more effective, healthier paradigm that you can adopt and obtain better results. So that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm recommends it more and more, share it with a friend who might find this information useful, and if you haven't, I suggest you check out this video about the paradigm of hand washing and the story of Ignaz Semmelweis. I assure you, you'll find it super interesting. See you soon.